good morning. I am going to call the Dakota County Board of Commissioners to order. Today is May 24th, 2022, and I am going to ask that the clerk please call the roll. Commissioner Atkins? Here. Commissioner Workman? Here. Commissioner Slavic? Here. Commissioner Gaylord? Here. Commissioner Heyman Rowland? Here. Commissioner Halverson? Here. Commissioner Holbrook? Here. Thank you. Please stand and join me for the Pledge of Allegiance. Finally starting to get some nice weather, so gets everybody in a little bit better mood. Mm -hmm. That's a good thing. Um, we're going to begin with going out to the audience. This is um, uh, the point in the meeting. If you have an item that is not on the agenda or an item that's on the consent agenda, you're, um, you can come forward. We do limit uh, comments to five minutes. Um, and you can also send in written comments if you would like. I do have... Um, list of some people that have asked to speak um, or at least have signed up. Uh, James Scallon. Good morning. Welcome. Good morning, Madam Chair and Commissioners. My name is James Scallon. I'm from South St. Paul. I represent Dakota County Group concerned with election integrity. In behalf of this group, I present the following resolution. Resolution to eliminate ballot drop boxes. Whereas absentee and ballot, mail in ballot drop boxes have to be accessible to the public, they are extremely difficult to secure and an open invitation to ballot stuffing. And whereas there is mounting and overwhelming evidence from across the country that video and surveillance does not prevent ballot stuffing, as many people have seen, are seen to be putting multiple ballots into the ballot drop boxes in full view of the camera and even other voters. Whereas video surveillance is often only effective in providing evidence for possible prosecution if governing and police authorities have the incentive and manpower to review hundreds of hours of video and perpetrators can be identified from the video. And whereas even if actual human beings are watching the ballot drop boxes 24-7, it is extremely difficult to keep determined perpetrators from putting in more than one ballot. Whereas once the stuffed or fraudulent ballots are in the box, they cannot be distinguished or separated from the legal legitimate ballots. And whereas these, difficult, these difficulties are insurmountable and therefore it is resolved that the Dakota County Board of Commissioners hereby orders the removal of and dismantling of three existing absentee and mail-in ballot drop boxes. And due to the insurmountable difficulty of preventing determined perpetrators from putting in more than one ballot, while by ordinance prohibiting reintroduction and use of ballot drop boxes at any time in the future, regardless of prevailing circumstances. A documentary was just released this month by Denise D'Souza titled 2000 Mules demonstrating the misuse of ballot drop boxes. And this doc documentary has returned to theaters for viewing by popular demand. Thank you. Thank you. Next I have... Next I have uh, Linda Nara. Linda? Good morning. Good morning. I'm Linda Nara and I live in Rosemont, Minnesota. I too represent the group of Dakota County residents concerned about our voting integrity. We want you to receive and add this to your next board meeting, full board meeting agenda, a resolution to eliminate the electronic voting equipment. Whereas Minnesota Statute 206.58 states the governing body of a county may provide for the use of an electronic voting system in one or more precincts of the county at all elections thereby providing a choice to use or not use electronic voting equipment. And whereas Minnesota Statute 201.225 states a county, municipality, or school district may use electronic rosters for any election, 
thereby providing a choice to use or not to use the electronic rosters. And whereas all electronic voting equipment is open to, to security risks that are effectively eliminated by using hand counting and paper rosters, and whereas we cannot see what is happening inside those machines. But hand counting is open to the bipartisan and public observation and supervision, providing the unparalleled security of many people with many eyes, and whereas the estimated cost of paper ballots is between $7 to $12 per ballot, depending on wages. And whereas the estimated cost of an electronic voting equipment ballot is two to three times more at $14 to $21 per ballot. And this cost is projected to increase dramatically over the next 10 years due to the constant need to upgrade software and hardware. And whereas the real world span of electronic voting equipment is not 15 years, rather due to software life cycle policies and other planned obsolescence, it is closer to four years. And whereas hand counting and paper rosters effectively eliminate the skyrocketing upgrade costs associated with electronic voting equipment. And therefore, be it resolved that in the interest of providing the most secure, transparent, fair, and cost-effective elections possible, the Dakota County Board of Commissioners hereby shall eliminate the use of electronic voting equipment and will return to the greater security and cost-effective practices of hand county paper ballots and using only paper poll rosters effective immediately. If the country of France can do a hand count and they know by that evening who their leader is, why can't we in Dakota County do a hand count? Thank you for your time. Thank you. And then we have Dave Bestron. Good morning. Good morning. Uh, David Bester, and I live in Lakeville. Um, yeah, thank you folks for letting me speak at your meeting here. May the peace of God rule here today. Uh, I want to start out with a quote by Rahm Emanuel. You never let a serious crisis go to waste. And what I mean by that, it's an opportunity to do things you think you couldn't do before. Through the COVID-19 fiasco, a few corrupt leaders used fear to do things they couldn't do before, including circumventing the will of the Minnesota state legislature by using the court system to ultimately open the election system to fraud through mail-in voting and drop boxes, and to make sure every vote counts, especially the fraudulent ones. We can see the results in our country when we don't take our right to vote seriously enough to make sure it's done correctly. That is our goal, because this is our county too. We, pro we propose a citizen board with party balance to oversee A, absentee ballot board party balance, B, election judge party balance, C, machine public testing and scheduling, and D, election equipment evaluation and recommendations. I don't think this is asking too much. I would suppose you're all busy here, and this election cycle is something you just want to get through and get back to business as usual. And I would suppose that would happen faster without our help. <laughs> but that is part of the government for the people and by the people. There are things that need attention from past elections, and our, and our uh, team wants to work through with the county staff to clear up dis discrepancies as soon as possible. We're not here to place blame at this point, but if it drags on too long, it becomes apparent there's something hidden. We will not give up. We only want the truth. I have in my past, when I was in a pinch for time, cut a few corners. But a wise man told me, you don't have time to do it right, but you have time to do it over. <laughs> the Bible says, God resists the proud, but gives grace to the humble. There's plenty of grace available, and there's plenty of opportunity to turn from being proud to being humble. None of us wants to believe there's truly evil and corruption in our government, and there are some who do, do not have our best interests in mind. But... The truth is, 
Uh, God has promised that through the pro promised through the prophets to expose evil in our government, and He is doing just that. And yes, there are prophets today. And yes, God still speaks to His children. God is raising up an army through His church to take our country back. And we, the people, are waking up, opening our mouths to speak and getting involved in our government. We'll be visiting our neighbors and campaigning for those who are working together with us for good. Let's work together and be sure Dakota County is a shining example of honest and transparent elections. Thank you. Thank you, David. Um, any other people that want to speak to the board? All right. Okay. Madam Chair. Uh, Thank you. Just to let the board know, we are moving towards having um, election issues on the agenda for the January or Ju June. not January June seventh um, GGP meeting. We've identified a number of issues, and we brought uh, to that meeting. We'll identify some of the procedures that, um, given the input, we've already changed in. Uh, uh, trying to address some of the concerns and then there'll be some items that we'll be looking for board input um, on relative to uh, some of the requests that have been in the resolutions that have been presented etc so just want to give the board that update and we're getting there government <laughs> moves slow and mm -hmm. um, there have been a lot of meetings a lot of staff time and I um, feel like we have a better understanding of some of the things that we could discuss that might uh, help resolve some of these concerns. Thank you. All right. With that, we will move to approval of the agenda. If you'll note at your desk, there is a, um, an amendment that's needed for a closed session. Madam Chair, I'll move approval of the agenda. Mm -hmm. With the amendment. With the, with the um, amended addition. Mm -hmm. Moved by Commissioner Heyman Rowland. Is there a second? I'll second, Madam Chair. Second by Commissioner Slavic. Please call the roll. Commissioner Workman? Yes. Commissioner Slavic? Yes. Commissioner Gaylord? Yes. Commissioner Heyman Rowland? Yes. Commissioner Halverson? Yes. Commissioner Holberg? Yes. Commissioner Atkins? Yes. Thank you. Motion passes. We go then to the consent agenda. This will, in this motion, we'll be approving the minutes from May 3rd as well as item 6.1 through item 12.1. Uh, is there a motion to approve the consent agenda? So moved. Um, so, okay. Moved by Commissioner Atkins, second, second by Commissioner Heyman Rowland. Discussion? Michael, please call the roll. Commissioner Slavic? Yes, with the exception of 6.5. Commissioner Gaylord? Yes. Commissioner Heyman Rowland? Yes. Commissioner Halverson? Yes. Commissioner Holberg? Uh, yes, with the exception of 6.5. Commissioner Atkins? Yes. Commissioner Workman? Yes. Thank you. Motion passes. And with that, we will move to the regular agenda. We are going to begin <laughs> with a legislative update. Um, and um, let's see. Um, I know we've got some people on uh, Zoom here. Do we want to just go to them or? Commissioner Atkins, did you want to? Yeah, start here's my here's my update on what the legislature yeah, okay. accomplished. That sounds no, I'm, perfect. They're still working. I think there's there's hopefully going to be more to come, but uh, I'm going to let our government right. relations team take the take let's, the lead. Let's then move to Paul Cassidy from Simpson. I see Paul is on. Yes, hi Paul. Good morning, Madam Chair, Commissioners. Paul Cassidy with the Stinson Law Firm. Um, obviously, uh, the legislature met throughout the past few days. <clears throat> at a constitutional deadline of finishing up by midnight on Sunday night. And uh, they adjourned uh, without accomplishing very much. Um, <clears throat> a comprehensive tax bill, um, most of the budget bills outside of <clears throat> the agriculture uh, omnibus policy, policy and finance bill did not pass. Uh, they were not taken up by the legislature. Um, the governor, uh, leadership from both the House and the Senate had an agreement a week earlier to uh, work within a, a budget and tax framework. Um, but uh, in the end, um, 
Uh, I think a lot of legislators in particular, I think uh, Republican legislators could not uh, 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 vote for a $4 billion uh, uh, spending increase plus um, a tax bill that had about $1.4 uh, billion in um, tax expenditures as well. Uh, one of the driving forces, I think, is that a lot of these uh, increases were going to be uh, structural and permanent going into uh, the next budget cycle. I think there's a lot of uh, anxiousness of, at the legislature over uh, whether or not we're going into a recession. So uh, passing anything, increasing the budget, uh, spending bills has become very problematic. Um, don't know where we go from here. There doesn't seem to be any uh, consensus or even much discussion over whether there's going to be a special session. Um, uh, the governor, I think, uh, uh, would like to call legislators back, but without a, air, a solid airtight agreement, I don't know what the point would be until they have a resolution to the issues that were left on the table Sunday night. So everything's up in the air right now. Uh, there's a number of good things, obviously, that uh, uh, we would have liked uh, Dakota County. The tax bill had uh, um, LGA and um, CPA money in it. Um, you had the homestead uh, uh, property valuation exclusion as well. On the budget side, um, there were a number of things. We had capital bonding. Obviously, we had uh, 14 projects that we were uh, hopefully going to get some funding for, along with some road construction projects in the transportation bill or the or the bonding bill. But um, all of those um, have now been left on the cutting room floor. So I guess we'll see in the next few days how discussions go with the governor and uh, legislative leadership. But for now, I do not see foresee a special session anytime soon. Madam Chair, I'd stand for questions. Disappointing. <laughs> questions? Commissioner Halverson. Um, thank you, Madam Chair, and uh, thanks, uh, Mr. Cassidy. That's, uh, I'm sure everybody's really exhausted <laughs> at the end of the session. Um, one thing that I did want to raise, and um, please uh, fill in um, any details you have, but one thing that did get done um, right at the bitter end was a mental health package, uh, which I think is a pretty big victory for uh, counties and for Dakota County in particular. We've made that a real priority. And um, so doing, uh, I know that there are some efforts to um, increase bed capacity um, by changing the hospital moratorium. Um, there's some efforts to increase uh, school-based mental health funding. And so and that was a, a fairly big mental health package that I don't think we were expecting outside of the HHS bill. And um, that to me was a, a good win for counties. So there's a piece of good news there for those of us who've been working on mental health here in the counties. Madam Chair, <clears throat> Commissioner Halverson, <clears throat> yes, that was one of the one of the uh, bright, shiny uh, moments of the legislature actually figuring out how to do something right. They created a lifeboat for all those mental health issues and put it out there on Sunday and passed it. Um, our team actually worked on that issue um, at Children's Hospitals in Minnesota is one of our clients. They received a, a bed moratorium exemption to to um, uh, place uh, uh, 22 uh, adolescent mental health beds. Um, in their St. Paul campus. So that was a huge victory. And then <clears throat> obviously lifting the um, hospital moratorium, uh, bed moratorium uh, for all mental health beds is a huge victory given um, the crisis that we're in with mental health, uh, both uh, pandemic and post-pandemic. So yes, that was one of, the, one of the big victories coming out of the session. So all was not lost. Other, other questions or comments? Thank you, appreciate the update, Paul, and uh, sounds like you're gonna be monitoring and hopefully going back at some point um, to try to finish some of this work. Uh, thank you. Let's hope so. All right, um, and then a uh, federal update. We've got Tom Downs and Mike Erlinson. Um, I think you're both on. Tom, you wanna give us a update? Madam Chair, thank you. I'd love to, to start it off. Well, as you know from the news, there are some pretty big debates going on in Washington right now around the war in Ukraine, um, 
baby formula of all things. Uh, what we're focused on, Mike and I, um, for Dakota County, are some um, initiatives around around the budget, and um, we have some very good uh, progress to report. The um, the House Representatives uh, Appropriations Committee has uh, completed collecting project requests from members of Congress, and Congresswoman Angie Craig has introduced uh, three requests for Dakota County. Um, that's three out of a maximum 15 that she's allowed for this budget cycle. Uh, that includes just under $5 million for uh, the Veterans Memorial Greenway. That's a project we've been um, advocating for for the last several years. Uh, just over $5 million for um, I-35 County Highway 50 interchange. That, again, is a project we've been, Mike and I have been advocating for for the last several years. Also, um, a $375,000 request for the county sheriff's office for a, an outreach campaign. Um, on the Senate side, Senator Klobuchar, Senator Smith, uh, they've got a little bit more time and the Senate Appropriations Committee has rolling deadlines that are continuing for the next several weeks. Uh, we do know uh, at this point um, that Senator Klobuchar is backing the that same $375,000 request for the Sheriff's Office. Uh, Senator Smith has introduced uh, the $4.5 million request for an energy uh, sustainability, uh, clean energy project for the county, and also that $325,000 Sheriff's request. So I think what we'll see, um, the House Appropriations Committee will continue hearings uh, when we get into June, probably late June into July, they'll begin to move the bills through subcommittee to full committee to the House floor. Uh, the Senate, again, moves on a little bit slower track. Uh, we may actually not see any bills introduced in the Senate um, this summer. They may uh, hold them back until after Labor Day, or we may see a few um, introduced, but oftentimes the Senate waits until the final House Senate Conference Committee um, to complete their action. One other um, really positive uh, outlook, I think this year, as opposed to last year, I think Mike Erlinson would agree, is um, we don't have a separate track for transportation projects. As you know, last year, there was a multi-year surface transportation bill, and that really um, caused problems for, for the county, for many others who had projects that were not placed in the normal appropriations track, but rather were placed in the multi-year surface transportation authorization. And when that bill went to conference with the Senate, they removed all the earmarks or all the, the community project funding requests. So we don't face that, that challenge this time. I think it's gonna be a much more orderly um, process this year and uh, we're hoping for a good result and we expect that result to be achieved in, in the lame duck session, which is um, the second half of November into, um, into December. So with that, I'll, I'll pass it to my colleague, Mike. Thank you, Madam Chair. Thanks, Tom. No, that was a great update. Uh, nothing to add here. Happy to take questions. Thank you, Madam Chair. All right. Any questions or comment on the federal side? If not, thank you both for uh, that update. Appreciate it. And we will, unless there's anything else, Mr. Smith? Sure. No, no we sort of planned this agenda, assuming that there'd be a lot to report, and uh, uh, I was <laughs> yeah, wrong. Yeah, I know. <laughs> Madam, right, Madam thank Chair, you. if I might, I just, yes. and I don't know if the, the guys all jumped off, but uh, it wasn't for lack of effort by our GR folks. Oh, no, um, yes. And I want to commend everybody on our board as well as uh, staff members who put in oodles and oodles of time. I mean, the, the disappointment uh, with the outcome of the legislative session uh, is something I can't even put words on, and I'm trying to maintain a sense of humor about it, but I'm beyond disappointed, uh, but that being said is I'm beyond pleased with the effort that so many folks put into, uh, it. just monumental efforts, put you know, it, not just the, the law group, but all of the staff folks in our GR team who did a great job, and many of you all made your calls and talked to everybody, yeah. so just wanted to commend that effort. Thank you, thank you. Yeah. Okay, um, with that, we're, we've got a number of closed executive sessions to, to decide on here. 14.1 um, uh, um, closed executive session has been asked for for the acquisition of parcels related to projects 26-54 and 63-25. Does anyone want to go into closed <coughs> session? Okay. Is there a recommendation or a motion? Tom, do you need? Madam Chair, yes, there is a proposed settlement resolution attached to that item that if you okay. would proceed to vote on. 
I will move that resolution. All right. We have a motion by Commissioner Slavin. Second. And a second by Commissioner Atkins. Seeing no discussion, clerk will call the roll. Commissioner Gaylord? Yes. Commissioner Heyman Rowland? Yes. Commissioner Halverson? Yes. Commissioner Holberg? Yes. Commissioner Atkins? Yes. Commissioner Workman? Yes. Commissioner Slavic? Yes. Thank you. Motion passes. 14.2 um, is a discussion of strategy in the VTEC versus Dakota matter. Is there desire to go into closed session on this one? Um, Madam Chair, I visited with Commissioner Halverson. I think there is at least a brief chat about it. All right. So a motion by Commissioner Atkins, seconded by Commissioner Halverson to go into closed session. Clerk will please call the roll. Commissioner Heyman Rowland? Yes. Commissioner Halverson? Yes. Commissioner Holberg? Yes. Commissioner Atkins? Yes. Commissioner Workman? Yes. Commissioner Slavic? Yes. Commissioner Gaylord? Yes. All right. Thank you. Motion passes. We will do that. Um, but let's first get to 14.3. I've numbered it. Um, the uh, <laughs> Uh, matter of Olson versus Dakota. I have a request for a closed session in this matter also. Is there a motion to go into closed session? Tom, did you need? Madam Chair, uh, this matter um, got brought to you on fairly short notice because we got an order from the court at the end of last week. The memorandum that we provided you just gave you an update and reconfirmed the litigation strategy we pre previously had in place. So if you're still in alignment with that strategy, there's no need for a closed session. All right. I think we're good. With that, um, I have a decision here whether we go through and finish the rest of this agenda um, and go into closed session or go into closed session and come back. Um, let's, uh, let's do the reports and come back. And we'll yeah. just go into closed session and whatever we need to do on that. So <clears throat> I'm going to move us to the interagency announcements and reports, and we're going to begin with the Association of Minnesota Counties. Thank you. I think you were up at the legislature. Are we, or they were. Yeah, sure. Yeah. There's a lot of stuff going on. And this week, weekend was busy. We heard certainly um, just moments ago busy with not much uh, results. Um, but as a result, one of the things that did happen is um, yesterday AMC staff did have a Zoom uh, meeting had about 210 uh, county commissioners and staff that attended that uh, update of just what what happened. A couple of perspectives, though the end result wasn't over there. I think uh, two two points that I think I would bring up on there. Uh, the first one is um, we started this session uh, kind of with an expectation that county program aid was not going to be increased. I think that was just the the reality. With it was there was a big yeah, the formula changed as well as the fact that, uh, um, you know, we received a number of, of resources from the federal government over the years, over the last couple of years, so uh, that wasn't going to happen. The House, just to give you perspective, had almost a three to one. Uh, they actually had uh, county pro program aid and local government aid in their, their bills, um, but it was um, $3 to local uh, government aid to the cities, $1 to the county, and as you know, we've been continuing to make the case that when uh, county program aid is given, it actually is spread amongst all residents of Minnesota, as opposed to local government aid that chooses certain cities based on criteria uh, on that. So uh, the position of AMC and uh, MICA over the recent years that has been successful has been for every dollar you put into local government aid, you should put into county program aid. Some would argue actually it should be the opposite way of that, and more money should go to county program aid as the mandates of the legislature and the federal government uh, put on counties. Um, uh, there's a greater need for that, but the reality of it was uh, it went from a three to one legislative uh, LGA to CPA to end up being a one to one parity in, in a tax bill, and I think that's a, a great success story in the fact that um, in a bipartisan effort, we had legislators and senators from both parties that ultimately said, if you're ever going to see um, uh, local government aid coming in again, it's going to be CPA, LGA uh, parity. So I think that hopefully that narrative continues down the, the, the road there because we tried really hard about two years ago and I was on the phone with about a dozen legislators this weekend uh, going and saying, I thought we always were doing one-to-one -one now after that. So that's, that's good that if we're going to do that, we see that reality. Um, the second point that I would make in here is um, the broadband bill actually did pass and there are some things that do have some impact for the uh, uh, potentially to go to county, but at least for the state. It was part of the 
Um, I guess they called it the drought relief ag and broadband bill. But um, in that did actually include $50 million of the general fund uh, to be used for the border to border broadband, which Dakota County can be eligible for. Uh, 25 million of that for this year, 25 million for next fiscal year. Um, as a, additionally, with that is 60 million in part of the ARPA capital projects funds that were part of the federal monies that haven't been able to be released because of sounds like a whole lot of reasons, but this allows some of it was some matching and some of it was just some timing. Uh, but of that includes um, 15 million for line extension grant program, which certainly could benefit us, 15 million for mapping, and then 30 million for low density pilot program, which also could potentially fit our rural areas in Dakota County where it doesn't have the de density. And that is a 75% state match capped at 10%. So there is some uh, potential um, positives within broadband, particularly uh, for the rural part of uh, Dakota County with that. Uh, that's all I have. I know that we had a couple other commissioners on if there's more they wanted to add, but no. those were the, the points that were added for this point. You did great. Okay. Yes. Um, just to, I mean, I think that that um, was a great um, uh, update and there was some, some tiny little bits of work that really got done and got done well and um, had bipartisan support. I think that the point that there's really good stuff sitting in bills that are wrapped up and, and ready to go um, is a point that shouldn't be lost and, and that we, um, at this point, uh, trying to get these folks back into a special session, getting a, and it won't get done without a global agreement. Um, the governor won't call a special session, but um, I think that anything that we can do to get them back to the table, because there is some really good things in this bill that could really help our counties. So, um, uh, we, you know, we'll wait and see, but I think that just to assure people, I think there's gonna be a lot of work going on behind the scenes to uh, get people back to the table. And I think we'll be a part of that discussion. Well, I was just gonna, you know, you did a great report on, uh, on the uh, broadband and that was a, that was a, a win for us. Uh, I think that there is an optimism from the county leaders across the state that they will go back into special session. So it was 80 to 20. And, and, and I can see Commissioner Holmberg is going, no, it's probably a snowball in <laughs> that other place, right, Chance? But um, yeah, good reports. I think that's, they've covered, they've covered what, uh, the CPA was really important. What a great win for us one-to-one -one parody that was yeah. so thank you that's that was good and finally madam chair mm -hmm. uh, just the county commissioners and staff uh, did a survey to a uh, push poll at the beginning just to go in and and ask um do you want them to go uh, legislature to go back in the, into special session and then at the end based on all this information do you still want and so i, I don't know if that would be the uh, our lobbying team of, of the association of minnesota counties that was as optimistic as the um, st county staff and county commissioners were very hopeful for a, mm -hmm. a special session but i don't know if i would uh, I, I, I think that everyone else it's as, as we heard from our own government relations team it's kind of an unknown with that so miracles well, happen that's right all right, thank you. Dakota Broadband. June 8th, next meeting. All right. Metropolitan Emergency Services Board. Uh, met May 12th, all routine. There was a legislative update that obviously didn't go very far, but, <laughs> and then we meet again on June 9th. All right, thank you. Minnesota Intercounty Association, MICA. Um, we did send out a legislative update that kind of went through um, some of what was in for in particular for me the the tax bill um uh, we've talked a little bit about cpa uh, yeah. micah was really carrying the torch in a very dark room for a long time to try to get uh, uh county program aid increased and uh, it is in the tax bill at 30 million dollars so um, money to uh, assist uh, counties in providing all of the services that we provide Lots of stuff in the tax bill. It was nice to see that. It's unfortunate that it got kind of uh, waylaid by the, the process up at the legislature, but hopefully when they resurrect everything, uh, some of these things will still be in it and we'll be able to, to make that happen. Um, obviously, uh, efforts are continuing behind the scenes. And Micah actually meets, uh, uh, well, I think we've already met for this month, so it will be next month before we actually meet again. So. 
but we will continue the work behind the scenes. Uh, Metropolitan Mosquito Control District. Executive Committee meeting tomorrow. All right, National Association of Counties. Nothing that I have, nothing, okay. Um, Minnesota, oh, no, um, Vermilion River Watershed. Thank you, Madam Chair. Our meeting for this Thursday has been uh, canceled uh, due to lack of items. Okay, workforce and Workforce Development Board. Thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, our Employers of Excellence Awards breakfast will be tomorrow. And then the, I'm excited about this opportunity. The Workforce Development Board is going to start meeting in businesses. And we're gonna meet at Rim Kenworth for the uh, month of June. And we had a great presentation on the Great Scott website. I had shared that with you, Matt. And um, I think it's really a great website for workforce development. And uh, it's Scott counties, and maybe there's some opportunities for us to steal great things. And then um, our mob summer conference is uh, this summer, August 3rd to 5th. And just to report that the unemployment rate, the state unemployment rate is 2.2%, which is the lowest in recorded history according to the Minneapolis St. Paul Business Journal. And that concludes my report. All Thanks, right. Madam Chair. Thank you. That is a very low rate. It's a very low rate. Uh, any other announcements or reports? Mm -hmm. Going once, going twice. All right, we go to Matt Smith then. All right. For the manager's um, report. Commissioner, it's just, <clears throat> just, um, just one thing to mention. Of course, there's no uh, board meeting next week with uh, mm -hmm. Memorial Day weekend, but uh, then the next meeting, as was mentioned, will be June 7th with board and GGP. And then looking ahead, um, we'll be holding the first workshop to begin planning for the 2023 budget and tax levy on June 21st. And um, uh, just a note, you know, as we're kind of watching what might have happened in the tax bill, that $30 million of CPA, if it were actually enacted into law, would add a little over $2.5 million additional CPA for Dakota County's budget. And so that's a data point that's sort of um, an unknown at this point as uh, the board goes into uh, planning for 2023. Okay, thank you, appreciate that. All right, with that, we're gonna go into uh, closed ex uh, session, a closed executive session for discussion on the VTAC versus Dakota. Um, so we are now in recess. <laughs>